In today's Doomstalker painting guide, I'm going to show you how to speed paint Necrons. And it's coming right up. Necrons! Nick speaking, and welcome to this video. Right today, we are painting my three Doomstalkers. We're going to start off with Ironbreaker. We're going to do some basic dry brush techniques. This paint scheme that I'm doing today is a nice, simple, easy to do scheme which is going to look pretty cool. Now, I've made some videos on dry brushing in the past and I'll link them up in the description below, but it's pretty easy. You basically get a nice soft brush, you put some paint on it, so you take the paint off using a cloth and a tissue, so you've got hardly any paint on the brush, and then you gently dry brush what you want to paint. So I am painting the legs here and I am going very gently, as you can see, just building up the colour. Now this is just the first coat and one thing to note here is I'm going to be using no washes to paint these miniatures which will help speed up the painting process. And the dry brushing technique that I'm using is going to give this metal a nice old metal worn look but without using those washes. You of course could just block in the silver colour and then use a wash and then do edge highlighting but this is a nice quick simple scheme. So I'm going to put this colour all over the miniature with the exception of any areas that I want to keep black. That's particularly on the guns because I have the front and the rear of my guns black. When I got the bulk of this colour down on the bigger areas I then got a smaller dry brush. I'm using the Citadel dry brush here and then I just dry brush some of the smaller areas behind the legs and some of the smaller pieces on the top section. Of course, I'm painting this in sub-assembly just because it's easier to paint it. Okay, so that's all of those pieces done in that one colour. We're now going to work on the next colour. Now, these Doomstalkers here are from a video which I've previously made about converting them. All three of my stalkers are different. I'll link you up to that conversion video in the description below. But you just saw me there show you that I'm using lead boucher now and we're still dry brushing. I've got that colour in my wet palette and I'm now going over the original dry brush with this colour. What this does, it just brings out the silver, makes it a little bit more deeper but also because we're dry brushing it, you still get that almost patchy mottled look. You don't want it too patchy, but a little patchy. That helps give the appearance that it's metal. So I'm gonna do this all over the silver sections that I previously painted, again with a big brush and then a smaller brush. And then once that's done, we'll be back. Okay, so that's all of the pieces now with two coats and the silver is looking pretty good. We are going to do a little bit more work to it, but that will be later. Now, if you want to keep up to date with all things Necrons and more, then please subscribe and hit the bell notification to turn on all notifications. I'd really appreciate it. Right, now we're going to go on to the next stage, which is painting the orbs and I'm going to be using green, warpstone green. Of course, if you're using a different dynasty, then you can use any color you like. I'm going to use my size one paintbrush. I've got that paint in my wet palette. Now, if you want to make your own wet palette, again, I've got a link to a tutorial on how to do that in the description below. So we're going to put some of that on our paintbrush and we are going to block in all of the orbs. We're looking to totally cover the orbs. However, we're going to do this in layers. We've got watered down paint, nice and thin. We're going to build up the layers. So do one really rough layer, which is what I've just done there. Let's that fully dry. Then we go back over that, just neatening up the paintwork. And then once that's fully dry, we'll go over again, giving it one last coat just to fill in the green. Sometimes you'll need four coats depending on how thin your paint is. But my end goal is to match my reanimator here. So actually on my reanimator, I've only painted this green color on the top half, not on the legs. And I'm going to continue doing that on the Doomstalkers so that they match in. One thing which I like to do is match my old uh, miniatures in with my new ones in terms of the painting. So I'm going to paint the wires. Again, I'm just going to block in the base color for these. We're going to highlight these, and we're gonna highlight them in a couple of different techniques. 
which I'm going to talk more about, of course, later in the video. So just block in anything that you want in this green colour, build up the colour until you've got a nice, even, flat coat. Okay, so here's everything that I wanted the base coat in this particular green. I'm going to use another green as well, and that's on the front of the Gauss guns there, because I'm matching my old Gauss weapons. I've actually used the Caliban green as the base coat on the actual Gauss section, not on the sections at the back. I'm just showing you here that I'm matching in the guns to look like my Doomsday Arc gun as well. So that's what we're going to have a look at next, doing the sections just in there and also at the back of that big gun. Okay, so now I'm going to work on the guns, the base coat. I'm going to use the same warpstone green and I'm going to put that on the back of the gun on that little energy section and then I'm going to put it on the inside of the big gun on the top there just using that size one brush just carefully painting the inside now we're trying to paint all the way in with this particular color so inside the little grooves that are in there as well it's going to take two or three coats just to build up that color so it's nice and flat so I'm just going to work on this all over the guns and then we'll be back Okay, so back to my Doomsday Arc gun, and I'm just showing here that I've got the front and back black, which is what I'm attempting to do on these Doomstalker guns. And next, we're going to look at highlighting. So the gun highlighting at the back, at the front, and also down the bottom there. I'm going to also do the next layer on the Gauss, uh, what I call the green rod as well. That will need highlighting. Now on the base here we've got some scarabs and I've actually done a little green dot on the scarab as well. So let's have a closer look at these and get some paint on them. The orbs first and we are going to use mute green. Now again if you're using a different colour, maybe red or blue, just use a lighter colour. I've got the colour in my wet palette. Uh, with a little bit of water as always. So we are now going to start applying this coat. We are going to be looking at maintaining the original base coat on the edges of this orb. So we're going to paint basically over the center section leaving a little edge around the outer area of that original base coat. And that will just give us a little bit of contrast. Now of course you could glaze these and I've done that previously on a unit. I do have a tutorial on block glazing, which again, I'll link to in the description below. And we're just gonna build up the layers. Don't worry if the first layer looks really dodgy because it happens. The more layers you put, the more the color builds up and becomes brighter and stronger and well, flatter as well. So several layers, let them dry in between layers. And of course, make sure that the paint is slightly watered down. You don't want it too watered down, especially for one of these light colours, but you definitely need some water in it. So I'm going to continue painting all of the orbs here, and again, the orb on the body, I'm just leaving the recesses, the original colour. So that's all of the orbs painted, and we can start to highlight the rest of the green next. And the first thing that we're going to do is... I'm going to show you this. That is my green stuff head, uh, neck that I made. So um, in the conversion video, I talked about how I did that. I made a little green stuff cast and I made some new necks so that each model has a different length neck. Pretty cool. The conversion video, check it out. It's in the description. Right, I think we are going to actually do some more highlighting next. Okay, so it is back to dry brushing. What we're going to do is we are going to highlight the little energy sections at the back of the guns. And we're gonna do this with dry brushing, the same color as we did on the orbs. The front of the guns is a different story. You could dry brush them if you wanted maybe a bit more of a glow effect. I don't have glow effects on my uh, gun, so I'm gonna do a different technique. So this is the first technique for highlighting we're going to do, dry brushing. So it gets all of the paint off of the brush so it's nice and dry, and then literally dry brush all over the raised grooves in the gun. Now this does look quite messy, but I'm going to be repainting over that black section. It will make it look really neat and tidy. Of course, again, if you want a glow effect, then you could do so here. 
You could also just manually thin highlight each individual uh, slot in that gun section, but that would be a lot of time and effort and skill. And also that section there actually gets covered up with the side section when you push it into place. So you don't have to be too uh, drastic with the, the highlighting. So next I'm going to do the back of the little Gauss gun and then we'll be on to the next stage. Okay, so that's all done and I did the back of the Gauss gun as well. And we're gonna move on to the next stage of highlighting. And we are going to get out our triple zero brush or the smallest brush that you, you have. And this is gonna help us get into the small grooves of the front of the gun. We're going to use exactly the same color, mute green. And the idea is here, we are going to try to paint the raised areas in the groove which sounds harder than it actually is because you can literally just run the brush over that section and it just picks out the raised areas now if you want to be a bit neater with this then just manually go in and paint each individual raised section but yeah a light brush over the top will actually start highlighting them now you will need to go from both angles so you hit the sides on both sides so basically highlight it in one side and then turn it over and highlight it the other way. And then on the little sections just uh, on the side of the guns there where you can see a little bit more of that raised area, I'm just going to draw a tiny little line going down there uh, so that it just pops a little bit more. And that is the green of the gun all done. Looking pretty cool. However, we're not finished. So next we're going to go in with a size 1 brush and what are we going to do because I'm doing a voiceover, I have no idea. Okay we're going to do the wires, <laughs> that's what we're going to do. Now I've got the two colours in my wet palette and they both have a bit of water and we're going to highlight the wire by putting the light section down first where we want that to be which is basically in the middle of the cable. So I'm going to take some of this paint and I'm going to basically lay it down where I want the lightest point to be. Now we're going to use a technique called feathering. So I'm going to lay down that colour. I'm going to then take the paint off of my brush. Then I'm just going to spread the paint towards the area that we don't want the paint to be on. And we're going to build up this colour in layers. So, of course, once you've done one layer, let it fully dry before you start touching it again. You can see here, I'm just spreading that paint out. Now, the more pop that you want on these wires, the more colours you would use. You'd use an even darker colour, maybe an even lighter colour. I'm just using two. That's because I'm matching it into my old Necrons. And to be fair, you can get a good effect with two, and it's pretty easy. So just lay down that base colour, spread it out towards the darker colour. Once you've done that all over the wire, and don't forget you've got the sides to do and the top and bottom. I find it easier to do the two sides and then you can match the other areas, the top and bottom, into the sections that you've already done. Once we've laid down that first colour, we will then start to come the other way. So in other words, get the darker colour go to the darker side of the wire, put some paint on and then spread that back the other way over the lighter wire. And we get a really nice smooth transition building up the paint this way. It will take two or three coats of going backwards and forwards but it's very simple to do and it's an easier technique to do than wet blending. That's where you have two wet paints and you try to blend them together. This is layering a wet paint over a dry paint. So you put the paint on and you basically spread out the paint. So do this all over as many times as you like. As I said, uh, the more effort you put in, the better the results will be. Okay, so that is done all over the little wires and the green is looking pretty cool. However, I've not quite finished. I'm just showing you there that uh, you need to remember to do, of course, the top and bottom of the wire as well as the sides. Now, the next thing that I need to do is sort out the Gauss uh, weapon there, in particular the green rod, as I call it, at the front. And what I do there to match my other Gauss guns is I just block in that green. 
Now it does take quite a few coats because it's a very light uh, colour. So I'm going to do around three coats, just building up this colour over the little Gauss weapon there. Okay, so that is all done and it's looking really good. However, now we're going to tidy up the areas and make this green pop, in particular the black. So I'm going to get some black on my wet palette. I'm going to use my size one brush. A little bit of water in the black, not too much because it does go a bit thin then when you're trying to cover over a colour. And I'm going to just block in all of the black areas that I want black. Now it also paints the inside edge of that little Gauss uh, we weapon where the green is. And I just use a really small brush, the triple zero brush, and just do a little line just on the inside. And that really tidies up the black. So I'm going to paint everything that I want black in this colour, including the little stem that's in between the miniature which is floating in the air because I want that black as well. So there you go, all painted black and looking pretty cool. I'm just explaining there of course that you need to make sure you hit all of the edges of the black, not just the top edge. Now what I'm gonna do is highlight the black. Now I do this very gently using lead boucher. Uh, I don't want my black to look too metal, I like it to look black, however I do want a little highlight. So a very small amount, so you can see I'm just checking it on my thumb there just to make sure I haven't got too much. And I just do a few little touches of highlight, not all the way over the black, just here and there, just to indicate there's a few little scratches on the black. So I'm going to do that all over the black, and then that's the black sections all done. Okay, so the next task is to make the metalwork pop a little. Like I said, we're not using washers, but what I am going to do is I'm going to paint in some areas black on some of the joints. So the joints on the legs and also the little sections that are recessed on the top of the model. This would just give the metal a little bit of contrast. It doesn't make a huge difference, but it does make it look finished. So again, I'm just gonna get that watered down black paint. It's almost like a wash, but it, it is proper paint rather than an actual wash. I'm just gonna paint in all of those areas or the recessed areas that I would like to have a little bit of contrast in. I only do this on certain areas, not all over, just the bigger sections. And there I am doing the legs, and of course make sure that you do the side sections and the front and back, so do it all the way round. So yeah, do this uh, wherever you like, all over the metal work. And there is mine finished. Really helps bring that contrast onto the legs. Okay, so I've done that on the back section there and also, of course, on those sections underneath where you saw me do them earlier in the video. Right, next up, what are we going to do? Because, as I said, I've been voiceovering this video. If you like the voiceover technique, let me know. Okay, yes, the shoulder pads. I'm going to introduce another colour. We're going to use Gehan's Gold. I like to add a little gold to my Necrons because it helps give a bit of contrast to the silver sections. Not too much, it's quite minimal, but it does make a difference. Now again, I'm using my triple zero brush and I'm going to paint over the top of the little symbols on that shoulder pad. Now don't forget when you do this to paint from all areas, so the sides, the top and the bottom build up the colour. It just adds a little bit of detail and contrast to the miniature. Okay so next up I am going to introduce some white to the miniature and I do this for all of my canoptic type creatures. I paint their faces white. I got that from the original codex where wraiths had white faces. So I'm going to use a pretty watered down white with my size one brush and I'm going to do several layers building up this white colour. The first one, just a rough coat, just laying it down into position. Once that's fully dry, I will then do the second coat, making it a bit neater, just working on all of the areas that I want to paint white. I'll probably end up doing about four or five coats of this, just to make sure that it's nice and bright, even, thin, and looks pretty cool. So I'm going to build this up, and we will be back. Okay, so that is the white faces 
done and that extra contrast especially once we get those shoulder pads on with the gold color is really going to bring these models to life even though the bottom half of the miniature is predominantly just silver now talking of the bottom half of the miniature we've got this terrain on the base which at the moment is silver that's primarily because that's how i have all of my bases however i want to make the silver look different from the other silver at least slightly different so in this instance i am going to use a wash i'm going to use athrax earthshade a brown wash and i'm just going to slap it all over the metal work on the bottom of the base and this would just give it a slightly different uh, contrast now once this is fully dry i'm going to dry brush over the top of that with bolt gun metal and then rune fain still just to give it a little of a edge highlight but using the dry brush technique because again of course it's fast and simple and you can see a little bit of contrast there now next i'm going to work on the base uh, with this green stuff now you don't have to do this but i like to do it what i'm going to do is fill in the little edges of the terrain so that when i glue my sand on i don't get any raised sections so I've got my green stuff, I've mixed it up in a board. If you're not sure what green stuff is, again, tutorial linked in the description below. I'm going to then squash it into the edge of the base. Then, using my thumb and a wet thumb, uh, I'm going to spread that uh, green stuff out as thin as I can on the base. And then I have my tool, I'm just going to make sure it's flat basically just work on all of the edges around the base so that when I put the sand on you can't tell that that terrain was attached to the model and not the base itself and there you go so that's all of the green stuff done and of course I'm going to let that dry and then I will paint the green stuff black before I glue any sand onto the base so that when I'm painting the sand black which is how I do my scheme the green doesn't show through so I've got the sand on the base it's fully dry and you can see I've added some crystals on there as well now these crystals are made from green stuff for the big crystals and from old sprue on the smaller crystals I have a tutorial again linked in the description below check it out on how to make your own green stuff crystals this is a watered down uh, black and I'll do two coats the first coat uh, will be done using a big brush on the bigger areas. I'll then get a smaller brush and just edge in all of the detail. Once this is fully dry, I'm going to dry brush the black using Dawnstone. And of course, do not forget to paint the rim of the base when you're finished. It's the last thing you do to a miniature. Just paint the rim of the base and then the models are finished. And here they are in their full glory. I really hope you like them and you got something from the tutorial. Now here are some other tutorial videos that I was talking about during the video for you to check out next.